We were in Delano maybe two and a half years before we went to Cleveland, Ohio on the boycott. We missed a lot of school and my grades had gone really bad. I was doing alright for a while and then I guess everything just got to me and I just dropped out of school. I talked to Caesar about it and he wanted me to go back and I told him no. My dad didn't say anything. My mom was the one that wanted me to go back. I said no. I started working with the union. I was willing to go to work. So Caesar started me working at the office where he was at. My mother sent me there because I guess she figured Caesar could talk me into doing something with my life. I guess he did. Caesar was always a person that made you feel at ease. He was very understanding and he was always trying to get the best for everybody. When I told him what my mom told me, that I had to go to work if I wasn't going to go to school, he says, okay, I'll get you a place to work. I'll put you in some place. I started working at the office for him, answering phones, taking notes and all that. I learned more or less, type a little bit. In Cleveland, it felt important. I remember when Caesar first got me to work there. He was having a meeting in his office, so I just looked in and I was walking away and he said, no, 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 come in here, Carmen, come in here. And I said, but you're having a meeting. He said, these are the people you're going to be working with. He introduced me to everybody and he says, before we get to business, I want to tell you guys something. He starts telling them an embarrassing story about me. She gave us a scare of a lifetime. We thought we were going to lose her. He was telling everybody a story about the snow. My brother had gotten this little tin and we were slipping and sliding down the hill really super fast. I remember just closing my eyes, holding on tight. My, my mom was screaming and hollering. Everyone at the office was laughing. I mean, everyone as they listened to the story. Caesar really made you feel welcome into whatever you walked into, wherever he was at. We were almost in Cleveland about two years. The Butcher's Union helped us find a place to live. And I remember doing errands for dad, getting messages to Caesar. Caesar would sleep in every morning. He would be up late very late at night. After two years in Cleveland, we came back, back to Delano. My grandmother had just passed away. A lot of things were missing from our house. It just seemed like every time we moved from one place to another, we had to start all over again, getting furniture, getting our stuff, and just different things. I remember coming home and there was an argument. There was like a misunderstanding between my dad and not necessarily Caesar, but Dolores. I didn't really know what was happening. I just remember there were debates on things. I remember a lot of times Dolores and my dad were arguing. I mean, not in a like a bad way, but just over something, one thing or another, but I never really paid that much attention to it. I guess I didn't know or I didn't want to know. I mean, I just figured he's my dad. He'll figure it out. He knows what he's doing. I knew what was happening because I always kept an eye on the news. At any time there was Caesar's name on the paper, I would make sure to read it, all of it. It was 1970. I was serving the Navy in Vietnam. My mom, she would send me clippings from El Malcriado and I would share them with my buddies. We were also distant from the politics of El Movimiento. 
Some of the soldiers were angry because many Chicanos back home were not supporting the war effort in Vietnam. Now me, when I returned from the military service, I started taking classes in Chicano studies at Fresno City College. One day, I found out that the campus food service was serving non-union grapes. They dyed them red to be disguised as cherries on top of ice cream floats. <laughs> so you know what I did? I let a boycott of the cafeteria. Hey, <laughs> you know what's an insult? There was no way that one single grape should find its way into Fresno City College. My mother was proud of me. And one time, we went with my mom and others to a Safeway headquarters because we were picking in Safeway because of the table grapes. We went to San Francisco to a Safeway headquarters. All of us were out there and the police, they were on top of the roof of the building. You could see the police up there with their guns aiming at us with rifles. Then they had those skinheads or whatever they called them, came out in their suits and white shirts and tights. Young kids like my age, they were calling us communists. And we had our stickers that said, boycott grapes. And then they had their stickers where he said, eat California grapes, the forbidden fruit. Or, or no, how, how was it? Eat the forbidden fruit, California grapes. So my mom asked for some. And Helen Chavez says to my mom, Jesse, what do you want those for? And she said, just fold it up like this, cut it off, and it says, California grapes, that forbidden fruit. <laughs> so we all got them. <laughs> Helen Chavez said, oh, Jesse, you're always so right. And she was. My mom was always out front. Another time, we were picking in Safeway in Fresno, one of the stores there. They had these same young kids, farmers, kids, or whatever they were. They kept calling us communists and all that. I walked by and they had grapes in their hands. One of them said, how do you say communist in Spanish? You say, ustedes vencerán. So they started shouting, ustedes vencerán, ustedes vencerán. <laughs> right on. Yes, we will. We shall overcome. We shall overcome. We shall overcome. The Bible says that when there's a problem, you pray and fast, and God will hear you. That's what Caesar believed. He didn't think he could base his will to struggle for the rights of farm workers on cold economics or some political doctrine. It wouldn't have been enough to sustain him. The reason to struggle for the rights of farm workers was faith. And he didn't think it was necessary to have a religion to act selflessly. We all knew many agnostics who were more religious in their own way than most people who claimed to be believers. Caesar drew closer to those who were drawn toward liberalism and radicalism who end up leaving the church. Caesar drew closer to the church. He learned and understood that religion was a beautiful thing. And he understood that all religions are beautiful. Religion just happens to depend on a lot of your upbringing and your culture. For our family, Christianity is a natural source of faith. When Christ was here, he was very clear about what he meant and said, and he knew exactly what he was after. Caesar talked about Christ being extremely radical. He was for social change. Si se puede. It's going to be a long journey, he said. Some of us will be the bridges and others the posts. Others will be the road and everyone will pass over us. Mexicans, whites, blacks, Filipinos, Arabs. We have become a brotherhood and a sisterhood for the first time in the history of this country. 
Stay by your parents if you can. When things get bad, when things get really bad, they're always there for you. The union gave us a sense of family. The union and Caesar helped us. You know, it's funny because I remember we'd go to the union. Everybody would be out there in the picket lines and stuff like that. Like during the summertime, the whole family would go out to the picket lines. You came to the Filipino hall for lunch or for dinner. And if you needed a ride or say, I had to go to the office or to do something and I was still eating dinner, like, oh, watch my daughter. Uh, can you give her a ride back home? Everybody took care of everybody else's kid. It was like one big family. You can count on anybody giving you a ride home, even if they weren't going the same direction. Everybody would help everybody out with their kids. You could always get a ride home. That's how strong the families were back then. We joined La Causa and we paid our dues because we had to win. We had to build our own union. The poor, you know, we have a way of solving problems. The poor have a tremendous capacity for suffering. We've been suffering all our lives. With the Farm Workers Union, our suffering was sweetened with the taste of victory and hope. Did it really happen? Or am I just imagining it? 58 months? Almost five years? It was a combination of stopping the blockades of grapes from Europe and the picketing. There was also a mini blockade in Canada, but that was more cat and mouse. The longshoremen, they really helped in San Francisco. They wouldn't unload the grapes. Pallets of grapes were just left there big piles of them, and the companies, they would complain. What's happening with the grapes? And the longshoremen would say, what grapes? We don't see any grapes. You know, that sort of thing. And the picketing, we covered all the major cities from Denver on up. Los Angeles was never a good boycott city, not for the grapes. They didn't eat much grapes in Los Angeles. We picketed LA, but it wasn't as big as New York and Detroit, for example, and Boston, Philadelphia, Pittsburgh. And so by the end of the boycott, we had covered all the major cities. Everything was covered. They couldn't sell the grapes because we just stopped them. And finally, they had decided we had won. That's when John GMR called Caesar. He calls him at 3 o'clock in the morning. And GMR had been drinking, and he calls him, and he says, Caesar! And Caesar says, Who is this? It's 3 o'clock in the morning. Caesar, this is John Giamara Sr. And Caesar plays him like, Who? What? Let's get up and sign a contract right now. And Caesar says, Well, I'd be happy to do that, John, but can you wait till about 9 o'clock tomorrow morning? Giamara says, Don't forget, we'll be there. Have everybody there at 9 o'clock. We'll line them up and sign contracts. And sure enough, they were all there at 9 o'clock. What a scene it was. It was just like, oh, you couldn't believe it. What a moment. After all that we had went through. You know, it was 58 months later. 58 months later. And we got the contracts. <laughs> Otro cosa no mamiches, el pique 
Conmigo toda la 